I think most technicians would agree that using a dual port manometer and taking static pressure is probably the easiest way to do airflow. Of course, when you do airflow, dual port manometer, you're going to want to do it when your system is clean. Because if the system isn't clean, it'll give you an illusion of a reading. And what I mean is, let's say you have a dirty blower wheel that's not pushing the same amount of air. It pushes 900 CFM instead of 1,000. What's going to happen is your static pressure is going to get lower. And let's go ahead and say that your 1,000 CFM, that was on high speed. So instead of 1,000, it's putting out 900. So now that you're putting out 900, your static pressure is going down. So whenever you go to the blower chart, you say high. And then you see the static pressure, it's going to tell you that you got like 1100 CFM. It's going to throw you off because the measurement's been skewed by the lack of airflow that's resulting by the blower being dirty. So your blower's being dirty, your coil's being dirty, your filtration being dirty. It's all going to throw things off. If you ever have like a skewed up static pressure, I mean, you can check dampers. Sometimes dampers fail on zone systems. I mean, it happens. A lot of times spring dampers will fail pretty early on because the motor has to fight against the spring. That's why I always say use power open, power close dampers. They last a lot longer. That's why I use it at the house here because I've seen plenty of the spring ones fail. You have to change the motors, which isn't hard, but you don't want to have to do it. Things like that. Anything that blocks the airflow is going to skew that number. It's not going to give you the actual reading that you want. It's going to give you a misrepresentation. That's why using the vein anemometer is a little bit different. And this, these are all going to be problems if it's not clean. I've used a vein before, but the vein is more of a pain to me because a lot of times you have to use the vein at a grill. And what the grill doesn't know is that beyond the grill, in between, let's say, a return grill and the back of a system, a back of a piece of equipment, you have a bunch of air ducts that are leaking. And when the air duct leaks, and let's say the machine is pulling 1,200 CFM through the return duct, and it ends up pulling 200 of those through leaks, or even 100 of it, then you go back with your vein anemometer and you're testing out and you see that the reading is lower than you would like. It's like, oh man, something's wrong with this system. Maybe I need to move the airspeed up, but it's not actually anything wrong with the system. It's the ducting itself. So having something that measures right there at the unit is probably the best. 